in just seven days, I'm gonna code the ultimate pillager update, transforming them into a lethal killing force that guards a fortified city. And to top it all off, I'm gonna code a custom pillager boss with an insane twist. Should you prevail in battle, your fame will stretch far and wide, and you will rule the pillagers with an iron fist. Your legions will burn the homes of your enemies and splay their ashes into the wind. Can I actually do any of this? Uh... So here's the game plan. I'm gonna fix the pillager outpost's biggest problem. An outpost is a military settlement away from the main force. There is no main force. Not gonna lie, I thought the pillager's home base was the Woodland Mansion, but no, there's not a single one there. So let me get this straight. Everyone's buddy-buddy during the raids, but the pillagers don't get invited back to the bachelor pad? And where do ravagers go outside of raids? Do pillagers sleep in these tents, and do they smell like pumpkins? I have so many questions. Day one, I'm gonna fix this mess and give these pillagers some proper housing. My ultimate goal is to make the city feel like it belongs in vanilla Minecraft. So I spawned a pillager outpost next to a village and I basically want to blend the two styles together. Since pillagers kind of remind me of vikings, why not throw in a bit of a viking twist? After four hours of painstaking labor, we built the ugliest village ever. This sucks, everything is in a line and weirdly tall. Well, eventually all of this is gonna be procedurally generating in the world and when it does, trust me, it'll look good. Just like a normal village, every single house is built with a purpose. We have the barracks, the blacksmith, the feasting hall, the fletcher, the lumber mill, and the stable. The fletcher is my favorite. Not only does he make the arrows, but he's also the one that makes the pumpkin dummies that you see everywhere. Everything was great, until I made one massive mistake. One so embarrassing that I debated cutting it from the video and pretending like it never happened. You'll notice that I've got two versions of the same house. I, I had this whole elaborate idea that the player could upgrade the pillager houses using a fancy new block and basically teach the pillagers to be the best version of themselves. I wasted a ton of time on something that I had to scrap in the end for being low quality. And I'm not proud of it, but I gave up and I, I just I went to bed utterly defeated. But when I woke up the following morning, it was abundantly clear that if I'm going to make the ultimate pillager update, I need to get it together. I still have six days, and that's more than enough time to turn things around. So I'm diving headfirst into the unknown, spending the entire second day working on the roads. I've never done this before, so I have no concept of how difficult this is going to be or how long this is going to take. What I do know is that I have nearly 100 jigsaw blocks, over 1,000 lines of configuration code, and zero margin for error. This is gonna be a long day. Uh-oh. Okay, so the roads spawn, but our houses are missing. I'm guessing it's because they don't have enough space. Yeah, so I made some smaller houses and those seem to work fine. The good news is that I configured everything perfectly without making a single mistake. The bad news is that due to space constraints, this was never going to work in the first place and I did all that work for nothing. I spent an hour making some larger roads and thankfully that seemed to work fine. Whatever, good enough, let's move on. It's the dawn of day three, and something about this village is... off. Yeah, it's still kind of floaty and even goes underground occasionally, which can be really cool, but it's usually ugly. I want you to look at vanilla villages, how they mold to the landscape. This is a dance of mathematics between man and earth. A dance that will be my ultimate challenge. Done. Apparently Mojang made it so that I could change this one variable here and then magically the roads just stop being flat. I'm in this weird situation where I finished everything I had planned for today in literally 10 minutes. So I'm feeling pretty good about myself right now, but looking at the village, I can't shake the feeling that something's missing. You see, pillagers are jerks. So naturally, they're gonna make a lot of enemies. They need ironclad defenses, like a giant Viking palisade wall. I'm telling you, you get behind enemy lines and when you turn around and see this giant spiked wall to your rear, your heart starts racing because it feels like you're not supposed to be here. But by far, my 
favorite part is that the wall adapts to the terrain, and we even have guards in the watchtowers. Since they're the ones protecting the motherland, they should be equipped with the finest pillager weaponry money can buy. So I gave them rockets. That sounded cool at the time, it sounded easy, but there's a problem. You can beat them by standing still and having a snack. Could you imagine defeating a navy seal by eating a Slim Jim? I might have been willing to look past this if they didn't also have Stormtrooper aimed. Look, I I'm not even moving. It was a nice thought, but forget about it. I'm, I'm, I'm taking away the rockets. It's more trouble than it's worth. Quick pause. I only realized during editing that I could have easily fixed this problem by changing the trajectory of the rocket. I've done stuff like this before. It would have been easy. Frankly, I wasn't thinking rationally. In fact, I was beginning to panic. We are way behind where I thought we would be at this point, and honestly, I just didn't budget my time all that well. But that's a problem for tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Gulp. Okay, so it's pretty clear that I'm gonna need a little bit of backup. So I reached out to my friend Zeppelington, amazing YouTuber by the way, everything this guy makes is just a masterpiece of art. Well, I asked him to build a Viking Grand Hall, maybe something similar-ish to Dragon's Reach from Skyrim. While he's doing that, I want to make the village feel more colorful and alive by adding some shops. I imagine that these merchant pillagers are like the disappointments of the pillager world. Dad, I don't know how to tell you this, but I... I knew this day would come, Billy. You're my son, and I love you no matter what team you bat for. What? No, it's not that. I, I don't want to pillage. I want to sell succulents and other desk plants. Ah! So I made a plant shop, a fish shop, a walking candle shop, a bakery, and a bar that sells dread daiquiris, the pillager drink of choice. When you drink it, it gives you a bad omen effect. Nothing too crazy. Oh yeah, that is looking real nice. I decided now was also a good time to fill the houses with loot and even add a new chest type. But yeah, what do you guys think? Should Mojang give us more chest variants? I mean, when I think about it, it's pretty weird that we have like a dozen different boat types and then there's only one type of chest. Also, I decided to swap out the worst pillager homes for the better ones since the village textures just looked a little bit too bland before. And frankly, Zeppelin Tin's house blows mine out of the water. I mean, just look at what he built. It's such an imposing centerpiece, a grand hall truly fit for a pillager Jarl. I asked Zeppelington to keep the inside empty since its sole purpose is to be a boss arena. Also, you might have noticed that there's deep slate in this build. If you've ever been to the deep dark, you'll see darkwood planks scattered throughout. Could pillagers have tried to pillage the deep dark? I would imagine this didn't go so well for them. But what if one pillager survived the slaughter and honored the memory of his fallen brothers by pulling the very deep slate they died on from the earth to serve as the bedrock of a new nation? A flagrant display of power and resilience reminding his enemies that he is the mightiest pillager that has ever lived and reminding himself that his empire was carved from blood. Or maybe Zeppelinton just liked deep slate. I didn't ask. It's day five, and thanks to my very generous Patreon supporters, I was able to hire Mogway, a professional 3D artist to make the boss model for me. It's beautiful, and as I was animating it, I couldn't stop thinking about the totem of undying around his neck. I'm pretty sure Mogway only meant for this to be decorative because we didn't talk about it at all beforehand, but it got my mind racing with ideas, so I've been wrestling with a difficult decision. Do I behave responsibly and only have one boss phase for the sake of time and my sanity? Or do I go completely overboard? As if that's even a real question. When you kill the Jarl, he'll channel the power of Odin and transform into a lightning god. He'll begin to levitate and create four additional copies of his massive magic buster blade sword and control them all with telekinesis. This dude looks like he wants a nice hug. Can I give him a hug? Idiot. It's a trap, because he'll turn sideways and start stabbing. That was the plan, but most of you guys wanted me to keep it as vanilla as possible. Fine, message received. Instead, we'll make him stronger and faster, give him some modest lightning powers, and then make it so he can whip his sword around and deflect arrows like an anime superhero. It's day six, and now we have our animations complete. We just gotta import them into the game. Oh god, look at him slide around. Oh! <laughs> I'm sorry, it's okay. 
we'll fix you. We'll fix you. Oh, oh, dude, his lights are moving. Uh, where'd he go? Okay, that should have fixed it. No! That was a lot harder than I thought it would be, but I eventually got everything working. Although it's too early to celebrate, I have less than two days to code an entire boss battle, a task which seems nearly impossible. But I'm whimsy. I'm not a quitter, usually. So I looked to my past data packs for answers, and what I found was remarkable. Sensible file names, code comments with words of affirmation. I know I can do this because I've done it before. Everything came together beautifully. And I'll show you in a minute. But first, this guy named AFRH Music reached out to me about making a custom music disc for my next update. Then he offered to make a song for the boss battle. And I told him, yeah, I don't know. Wait two seconds. I'm gonna send something. Okay. 14 minutes later. What? I, I can't believe I doubted this man. Th this was just the demo he cobbled together. The actual song is like a million times better. Forget the music disc. We're gonna play the song as background music in game when you're fighting the boss. It's the dawn of the final day, which I spent testing the boss and getting the music to play correctly. But at last, the Jarl is complete. And when you approach him, it'll trigger the boss battle. His first attack is an overhead swing that'll cut through the finest armor like butter. His second attack uses his arm-mounted crossbow to fire a flurry of arrows, leaving his enemies riddled with holes. For his third attack, he leaps into the air and delivers a swift death to those foolish enough to enter his great hall. Do you see these animation keyframes? Yeah, that's Braille. It says you're f***ed. You can pretty easily kill him by keeping your distance and using a bow, so honestly, the first phase of the battle, it isn't that bad. But just as you think you've won, his Totem of Undying activates and the Pillager Jarl turns into the Pillager God. He's faster and hits harder. He shoots flaming arrows and has much better aim. And now, his leaping attack summons bolts of lightning. Fine, fine, all of this is very similar to Phase 1. But now, the Pillager God can block arrows, and trust me, this changes everything. Because I guarantee you, 99% of the players are going to rely on a bow in the beginning. But this means you will cross swords with a literal god in a one-to-one -one duel to the death. In my opinion, Minecraft bosses are not very interactive, and in most cases, it comes down to a damage race. I get that Minecraft's combat is fairly simplistic, especially if you're not speedrunning or you're not doing competitive PvP or something. But you gotta remember that these boss battles Battles, they're made for the average player. And I think I struck a good balance here. See, you have to run in a different direction depending on which attack he's using, and obviously this isn't super mechanically demanding on the player's part, but it's also more than just eat a golden apple and click, click, click. Anyway, we got an hour left, and obviously we need to reward the player should they emerge victorious. So I imported the Pillager Jarl into Blockbench, deleted the Pillager Jarl, and now we just have a giant sword, which I then imported into the game. It looks really big and imposing and a lot different than the other swords, but in actuality, it's just a retextured netherite sword, which means it doesn't offer any advantage to the other players in a PvP environment. I think it would be cool seeing Mojang add different item variants like this. I personally always appreciate in-game cosmetics, especially when you don't have to pay for them, but when you have this sword in your inventory, the pillagers will recognize your strength and bend the knee. You become the pillager's ruler. You are their Jarl, and you will make them pay taxes. Come on guys, let's see those W2s. As you can see, you get a whole bunch of goodies, and this one's gonna be a little bit controversial, but they also have a slim chance of giving you diamonds, making this the first renewable source of diamonds in the game. In my opinion, mining for diamonds now is terrible. We either need a way to automate collecting diamonds, or a way of insta-mining deep slate, because this is boring. So yeah, there's the update, but is it fun? Well, I got my YouTuber friends together to try it out. Do I, do I want to go in there? I'm scared. These guys up here are not, I'm just walking in, see ya. <laughs> I own this place now. Wow, you really took it up a notch with this one. Oh, there's so many, there's so many back this time. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm just ignoring them. I'm gonna have to clear this whole place. It's gonna be a ghost town by the time I'm done. I I'll take a bullet for you, shovel. No, you're blocking him. <laughs> oh no. Dread Daiquiri. Okay, I'm gonna go into the building the furthest away from the big spooky tower in the middle. I found you the one with the biggest, steepest hill possible. Yeah, <laughs> great, love that. You're hurting this poor, defenseless animal. It here. Let, let me let me even it for you. Oh, there we no. go. Yeah. Whoa, Josh, look out! Oh, oh, Where do they oh, come from? Oh. No. Oh, this is so weird. Oh man. This is epic. I'll, you know what? I'm gonna pull a Santa Claus. I'm gonna go through the chimney. Thank you. Pillager Carl! Let's talk about this! What is this? Why? <laughs> <laughs> There's so much. So many arrows! All oh, these bringing reinforcements! That wasn't even part of the boss battle! I'm going at you! Yeah, that's right. Oh, he's in the wall. <laughs> Teabag him! <laughs> Easy. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> Oh, look at you, you little anime guy. Oh, oh no. He's, oh, he's, oh, he's, he's old he's, now. <laughs> what I didn't tell you, Josh, is that there's a third phase. Oh. I'm going up here. No, please. <laughs> please, too hard. I'm low, I'm low. Oh, no, do it. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> look at it weighing down. All right, Max time. Was it fun? It was so much fun.